I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we look at President George H.W. Bush's legacy when it comes to war, particularly the Iraq War, Juan? Well, Rick, I wanted to ask you, following up on what we were talking about, about the, uh, the agreement of main, many of the major media companies to go along with the censorship protocols of the, uh, of the, of the Pentagon in the, in the war. Ironically, this was the first televised, live televised war, and and those of us who remember the the pictures of the of the uh, the bombers hitting different different parts of Iraq and and uh, and uh, and Kuwait, uh, the, so you had this uh, this irony of on the one hand there was censorship and control, on the other hand it was a televised war, so that the American people got this idea of these precision guided bombs that the United States was unleashing on. Uh, uh, on the Iraqi forces. Right. Strictly speaking, it's not the first televised war. You could say Vietnam is the first televised well, war. But, li or but, live, live but, televised. But live yeah. televised war, yes, in the sense that you have these long uh, uh, press conferences, if you can call them that, run by Norman Schwarzkopf, the, the commander of the, the, the overall commander of the, of the Allied forces, as they were quaintly called, uh, who turns out to be a brilliant PR man. And what he understood was, uh, it better to talk over the reporters at the press conference and show pictures in real time, if possible. Sometimes they were real time. Sometimes they were uh, videotapes to show what the army was allegedly doing before anybody could check it out. Uh, so he brilliantly, uh, uh, I mean, it looks very old fashioned. He's got a television set set up on the stage in Dharan showing uh, allegedly uh, precision guided uh, precision missiles hitting their targets every time to make people give people the feeling that the American army is invincible. Let's turn to uh, the U.S. military commander in charge right. of Iraq, who you're referring right. to, General Norman Schwarzkopf. During a news conference January 31st, 1991, he explains how the U.S. has been targeting Iraq's Scud missiles. Last night in western Iraq, we also attacked and destroyed three Scud Tells with F-15s, and I feel we preempted a missile attack on Israel last night. Now, I certainly can't say there will be no more Scud launches. Uh, you can never say that. But I have a high degree of confidence that we're getting better and better at our ability to find them, and I think this tape speaks for itself in our ability to find them and destroy them. That's Norman Schwarzkopf, General Norman Schwarzkopf. Right. And the, the day before, actually, they showed pictures of them, of the United States Air Force allegedly blowing up Scud missile, mobile Scud missile launchers, because at that, at that point, people were very upset, frightened that the uh, Iraqis were going to hit targets in Israel. They did get a couple of Scuds through uh, the missile, the defenses into to Israel. So they had to have results. They had to show that they were taking out the Scud missile launchers. And so they claimed to have knocked out 11 of them. After the war, Scott Ritter and Mark Crispin Miller uh, did some good reporting and refuted this, said that no Scud missile launchers were, were blown up. Um, but the mobile Scud missile launchers. But the point is, is that in real time, uh, the, the press, the media, could not challenge anything that was said. Here's the video. Here are the generals with their pointers. Uh, uh, how can you argue with this? And there's nobody on the ground, uh, uh, no reporters in the field who can verify anything or contradict anything. It's not easy, even under the freest circumstances in war in wartime, to confirm or or refute what the government says, but there's zero chance in this in this war. So the American public gets the impression that uh, it's a clean war, a sanitized war. We're we're hitting every target. One of the great statistics to know is that 93 percent of the tonnage dropped on Iraq and Kuwait in the Gulf War was conventional dumb bombs, most of them from uh, Vietnam era B-52s. Only seven percent. Of the of the tonnage uh, fired were uh, laser guided missiles, which is what they're talking about here. So, so it's so it's possible to say that it was yeah. under George uh, I mean George Herbert Walker Bush that the United States government perfected the the propaganda control of media coverage of the war. Yes, and it's none of these things are, are new. In other words, if you go back to World War One, you've got uh, Belgian babies were being bayoneted by by the Germans. I mean, it's an old it's an old propaganda trick. So killing babies has been used before. 
But in terms of actual technical sophistication, uh, using the latest uh, media technology to uh, subvert democracy and to manipulate people and to, to, pers to make them feel good about the war, ultimately, uh, Schwarzkopf, CENTCOM, Pete Williams at the Pentagon and the Bush administration, this was the piece de resistance. The, your final thoughts in the last 30 seconds on the review of President George H.W. Bush's life that we're seeing in the media today. Well, I'm, I'm horrified. There, there was a column in The Wall Street Journal yesterday by William McGurn, uh, headline, George Bush's Wonderful Life, uh, where he literally compares him to George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life, which is crazy on its face, because George Bailey is a kind of populist. Uh, he's, he's opposed to the power of, of Mr. Potter and his bank and so on and so forth. But uh, George Bush was not a peace-loving guy. I'll never forget George McGovern uh, saying to me, and George McGovern, we have 15 seconds. McGovern having been a, a, a bomber pilot in World War II, saying, you know, uh, most of us came back from World War II, to, most of us who came back from World War II had had enough. Uh, Bush didn't, didn't get enough, didn't, okay. didn't get enough violence. We're going to have to leave it there. Rick MacArthur, publisher of Harper's Magazine, author of Second Front. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.